They have football and surviving, and that's it. Little did I know that, that seven years later they'd be running the biggest supporters club outside the UK. The idea was a second damn bus. How would get it over here? We not a clue. We can provide not only a bus for the team, but also provide work for these, for these guys. It suddenly became a lot more than just a project. It became a mission to make it happen. Real blow rail, the ship is still in Conakry. I was gobsmacked really, I was a little bit upset. The whole trip is about presenting this bus. Please let it come off the dock on Monday. Well, we, um, we arrived at uh, Armani's house, um, I think it was on the, on the Sunday afternoon before the Sunderland match, and we didn't have that long to stay, but we pulled up on this kind of a weird slope, and we thought, well, why are we parking here? Why would you risk leaving the car at this angle? So he, he walked the handbrake on and said, up, up we go. So he went, it wasn't really a path, it was like almost just a, a, a bit of dirt which he managed to walk up. And we found some steps up to this quite a large property and we thought, wow, this is quite a nice, a nice house that uh, Armani lives in. And when we got to the top and we actually met his mother and we met his girlfriend and we met his brother and his little boy, we soon realised that it was the owner of the, of the whole property and all the rooms in and around it. That was the landlord's house and they'd allowed Armani and his mum to, to use their, their, their sort of balcony to meet and greet us. So we had a, a, a nice chat to his mum, he was a lovely, lovely person, and his girlfriend, and met little Tony, because uh, Armani's child, named after Tony Griffiths, because of their relationship over the years. Um, but we didn't appreciate that, first of all, that wasn't where he lived. And then Armani said, would you like to see where I live? And we thought, well, we're in it, aren't we? He said, no, 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 come round here. So we walked through this person's house and, and round the side of it. And there was almost like um, uh, a concrete shell with darkened rooms, no lights at all. And we went into this first room, which probably a bit bigger than a box room. And that was where Armani lived with his girlfriend and his child. Great stuff, yeah, that's a good kid. This was little Tony when he was. I did. A day old. Yeah. yeah. He had his little city trinkets around, you know, his pictures and a city clock on the wall and, and, and scarves hung around. And we just we were just so blown away by by the poverty that, that, that people live in. You know, that we'd never you'd never have known that for instance. He never moaned about or complained about it. It was just such a humbling experience and makes us all realise how lucky we are. We, um, we, we ate um, Amani's mum's cooking, and then, and then afterwards, uh, two, um, two of the girls in the community sang, sang songs, and then uh, all the older guys did a rendition of, um, of some city song, <laughs> which was awful. It kind of was a but a way of, of a, a sort of ingratiating themselves into their community and everyone joined and they were all clapping, they were singing. It was a really lovely atmosphere. So in spite of all of that what's around us, if you look beyond the poverty, you can see such fantastic people, such fantastic and strong willed characters, very, very proud people as well. And we left there, we're springing our step, went down to what they call the cinema to watch City um, play against Sunderland. Look, let's on the land today, away. So we are now going out to watch the city match, yes sir. Yeah. With all the city fans behind me now, we are all running out to the ground to watch the city play in Sunderland today. So I hope we won victory. Yeah. Well the original venue that we had lined up um, was completely was completely full. So we found a second venue where to go across this this dodgy road in, in, in Freetown, what around some, some back alley. City! <laughs> and it was basically almost like a, a crow's nest. It was bizarre, this kind of building on stilts didn't seem particularly safe. And we all climbed up there and walked through this pitch black hole and there was three TV screens. <laughs> Yeah, 
I reckon there must be around about 150 people in here and it's like a sweat box but the atmosphere is brilliant, it is. We've got two TVs with City on and uh, one TV with Liverpool and West Brom on uh, and both are nil-nil at the moment uh, but it's a good atmosphere, very very friendly. No pie in a pint though today. <laughs> so. The atmosphere is electric. Yeah, everyone's really excited. It's bizarre because you've got three TV screens and the two are for City and one in the middle is the, the uh, Liverpool game. So you look at different games all at once, you know. The atmosphere is so intense. Every time there's a challenge, everyone gets up just like at home. But it just seems to be so much more intense. But it's a really nice atmosphere. After this game, in terms of what we're doing, we're going back to the hotel, we're going to have a quick change, refresh, then we're going out tonight, we're going to have dinner, hopefully with some people who we can influence getting our bus out of that dock within the next 48 hours. I'm not a betting man, but it's looking 80-20 against for getting the bus off in time. But if we're realistic, the bus will be here. That's the important thing is, but it's so important that we're here to hand it over for us and for everybody and for what we're doing. actually the ship. It's here and we've just seen the paperwork to confirm that the container is on the ship. When it comes off it's City's bus and away they go. It's like City is going to spread all over the country. 